How are you? How are you, Saints? Come on in. I just I just wanted to come on in and I just wanted to see how a check-in, a quick check-in, some words for the soul. I just wanted to check and see how everyone is doing in the beginning and start of the new week. And I just had some words for the soul. The Lord has been, have been just tugging on my heart and on my soul throughout this vacation piece. I want to say hello and greeting everyone. Come on in, please. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What the Lord had just had me dealing with and just meditating on family. And I pray that this um, last weekend that we just all had together, everyone throughout the country was pretty much on a break, Thanksgiving break, winter uh, of Thanksgiving break. Um, it's family orientated. And I just pray that everyone had the pleasure of being with um, and surrounded by um a lot of love and family and good food and just genuine love and, and not um, feeling the anxieties of being stuck, stuck or uh, anxieties of being stuck or either um, trapped with folk that just tolerate them. How are you? How are you, Brother Fitzgerald? Hey, bro. Um, or feeling the anxieties of feeling stuck or trapped with folks that tolerate them versus people that love and genuinely love and appreciate you and have your best interests at heart. So I'm really, 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 really have been um, consecrating and just loving on God and God loving on me and just God has just dropped a word in my soul and my spirit pertaining to family in the midst of this um, this season, this family season. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. And I was praying and hoping and praying that everyone was able to surround themselves with, with loved ones and just be, be with people that love you because life is full of folks, bitter people. Life is full of bitter people. Your freezing and sound is gone. The devil is alive. Life is just full of bitter people. People are bitter. And I just I just began to read over in the book of Hebrews. And Hebrews 12 and 15 is a passage that speaks about bitterness. And 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 I just wanted to, it's good now. Praise God. Is I just wanted to share this with you. I won't be before you long. This was my midday morning praise, my my mid uh my mid-morning praise break. Um unfortunately, um I'm just running through the door, kicking the doors in. I was unable to do it. You know, I had a long, pretty long day. Um, battery life wasn't worth nothing. Forgot my cord and all that extra. So I had to just get it in when I got in. So this has been tugged on my heart for the, throughout the day. But I just wanted to go and just read to you guys a passage and just give you some words for the soul and just some words of encouragement and just love on you. God bless you. Hello, big sis. How are you, Pastor Lambert? How are you, sir? Just some words for the soul and just hoping and praying that everyone, come on in, saints, come on in, welcome, welcome. Just was praying that everyone had this opportunity and was able to take this opportunity to love on their loved ones, be with your loved ones, because life is full of bitter people. And as I begin to tell you, I was over in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 speaks about bitterness. And I won't go, and I won't be before you long. I won't go too much into it. Just a little scratch of the surface, just some words for the soul, just a little food for thought, something for you to sleep on tonight. Amen. Um, but I'm going to read, I'm going not going to even read the whole verse to you. I'm going to read half of this passage to you. No, I can't give you half of it. I got to give it all to you. So I'm gonna give you the whole verse, chapter fifth, um, chapter twelve, verse fifteen, over in the book of Hebrews. Looking diligently, lest any man fall, fail, any man fail of fall of grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Listen. That's exactly what bitterness does. And bitterness is plaguing the lives of so of our loved ones, of us, of us, this, 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 is what I like to say. So we must be mindful and we must be careful not to allow the snares and the demon of bitterness to inhabit and to dwell and to overpower you. Let me, let me, I took some notes in the midst of, um, 
as God began to give me some things, I began to take some notes about some things. And I want to read you something that I wrote down within the last uh, 48 hours and throughout the course of this week. But these last couple of days was really, really, really big with me with this bitterness and really, really big with me with this family orientation. Um, the book of Hebrews, like I just read, Hebrews 12 and 15, it does come as a warning and it sounds the warning. And um, and, it's, and it reads, lest any root, let lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. See, the root of bitterness is, the, is responsible for much trouble in our lives. The spirit in the root of bitterness is, the, is, is responsible for, um, for much trouble in our lives. I just want to repeat that one more time. The spirit in the root of bitterness is responsible for a lot of the troubles that's in our lives. And I'll elaborate just a little bit. Bitterness harbors, bitterness harbors, bitterness harbors in the heart, bitterness harbored in the heart for any length of time, people. Listen, saints, bitterness harbored in your heart for any length of time, any length of time will open the door for demonic invasion. It's a spirit. Amen. Bitterness is a spirit. And I'm going to tell you this. This is one of the most common. This is one of this is probably one of the most common open demonic uh, activities. This is one of the most common demonic doors that's open into the spirit realm. And it comes early on. And I'll tell you what, in, in majority of the cases, the bitterness is toward someone within the immediate family. This sort of kind of where this bitterness starts off at in families early on in the lives of family. Listen, this spirit comes to tear down and destroy families. It also comes to invade you. Remember, I often tell you guys, spirits come and they, they travel in groups. They travel in packs. They don't come alone. They don't come one by one. They don't. They're groupies. Just like we as people, we come Whatever spirit you have in you, trust and believe. If you don't know what spirit you have in you, all you got to do is check your surroundings. Check your crew. Check who you hang with. Birds of a feather flock together. Amen. Spirits that's in people gravitate to like-minded like -minded folk. So I'm going to bring that into the spirit world. That's one of my gifts is, is, is um, demonology, uh, 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 casting out demons and, and having the gift of, of casting out demons and the gift of, of discerning of spirits. So this is what I specialize in. Prophet Adams Outreach Ministry is a deliverance ministry. This is what we do here. We help get folks delivered, sanctified, and get them purified and cultivate their souls, getting them ready and fit for the master's hand. Amen. So this is what we do here at Prophet Adams Outreach Ministries. This is my specialty and demonic possession and demonic, the demonic world, the spirit world, um, 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 intercessory prayer for the souls of, of those that are um, not saved or backslidden or whatever the case may be. This is what we do. We intercede on behalf of their souls to help them, to help God transform their minds, to get them back consciously enough to make a conscious decision to give themselves wholeheartedly to God so that they can get them their deliverance and so that they can get themselves to heaven. That's the ultimate goal is to get to heaven. And I'm saying all that to say that this, these spirits of bitterness comes in groups. They travel in packs, just as people do. You find a crackhead, they're going to gravitate to some crack. They're going to gravitate to some crack and some people that's like-minded that knows where the crack is at. You get a pothead, they're going to gravitate to the pot smokers. You get an alcoholic, them spirits is going to draw him to alcohol or the alcoholics. This is what the spirits do. They drive us. They drive us. They control. So if you have demonic possessions, this is what's going on. But I'm just here to just touch on briefly about the spirit of bitterness. And we all can relate. This is a common spirit that us as common folk can definitely relate to because I know I can. Amen. And I just wanted to give us a little more insight as to be that we are able to be able to recognize some things because sometimes when you're most common, so many people get spirits entwined or misconstrued with personalities, with your own personalities. Amen. Oh, that's just, that's just so-and-so. That's just how they is. See, that's what we often say because we're not 
abrupt in the differentiation between demonic possession and, and the person's individual personality. Amen. So I'm just here to let you guys know that, listen, that spirit of bitterness is normally embodied and it's normally something that's taken root in people and it normally allows, hi, hi God, how are you? How are you, Nick? How you doing, sir? And I'm sure everyone that has a family can relate to this spirit that I'm talking about tonight. So we're talking about the spirit of bitterness. And nine times out of 10, in majority of the cases, um, the bitter, bitterness is towards someone within the immediate family, rather be your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your aunt, a cousin, a relative, a family member, bop, 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 whatever the case may be, we can go on for a season with the, the, the pointing about of what, who and what immediate families is. So you all get the gist of that. But bitterness, the bitterness spirits, it keep the bit of uh, the spirit of bitterness um keep alive hurt hurtful incident incidents i'm great i'm so proud of you oh thank you so much nick god bless you sir but god you know i always looked at you and erica and y'all family as my family i love you guys i finally got connected with erica a few days ago or throughout the the uh the break it was so good to see her when i saw her friend request in my uh in my uh on my friend request i thought that was i'm like ah look at erica so send my love be encouraged i'm proud of you too sir i see you doing big things uh family oriented i love it send my love to your wife and the family um but these spirits the spirit of bitterness it keep it keeps alive hurtful incidences so that his job is to keep 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 fresh those uh, incident, a uh, hurtful incidents that happened, things that happened years ago, the, the spirit of bitterness will keep that thing fresh and keep you harboring about it. Ah, oh, tell Erica. <laughs> so the spirit of heart, of the spirit of bitterness, it causes it, its job is to harbor hurtful feelings that happened to you years ago might have been something that your father did something that your mother did something that your sister brother did might be some sexual abuse that you experienced from your brother or your sister or your uncle or whatever the case may be it can be whatever the hurtful incident is in your life in your world this is what the spirit of bitterness is come to do it comes to keep alive these hurtful incidences listen to this i also um wrote this down as well um, his job is to keep those those hurt them them old incidents. His job is to keep them fresh and alive in your memory, as if it just happened yesterday. Listen to this. Um, thus, people. Um, so, while you still face with the current issues that you got going on, you know, um, you still on the backlog dealing with this past hurt that this spirit of bitterness has embodied you has come to keep fresh in your mind the spirit of, now now what he does is because i told y'all early on in this in this session that spirits come and hang in groups you may heard this, the expression from from the senior women if you lie you are still if you lie you are still okay that's because they're they're referencing to spirits that group together right you lie you steal you achieve you know what I mean? And, and, and it's a bigger group than just the three. So it goes on, but you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. But I'm saying that to give you an example of that, to let you know the spirit of bitterness hangs out and brings along with him the spirit of unforgiveness. So now why the spirit of bitterness is keeping things past hurt, fresh in your mind, that you can't seem to shake it. It's like it happened yesterday, playing on and on and on in your head. Don't let you see the person. Oh my God. Because we was talking about family. So that's why I thought that this session tonight would be so relevant. It brings about the spirit of unforgiveness, keeping alive every detail. Now, his job, his job is to keep, keep alive every detail, vivid. You remember it like yesterday because bitterness, thanks to bitterness. Now, unforgiveness is going to make sure you remember every graphic detail, the smell of his breath, the, the cologne they wore. I mean, the, the tone of their voice. I mean, you remember every graphic detail like it just happened an hour ago. See, and I'm saying that to say that as we allow these spirits to embody us and to take root and to take residence within us without even inquiring 
um, of how to get get rid of these things. Rather, it, it's called deliverance. You must be delivered. I had to be delivered. Hurt, pain, anger, murder, you name it, I was plagued with it. I can get, I get so angry, I can kill something. And I almost did. Like the loss of my polar life. I'm saying all of that to say, these demons don't come to play with us. They come to take our souls ultimately to hell because they don't come to just let you sit there and pacify it. By and by, the longer they're there, the stronger they get. As you grow, they grow. So now they grow stronger in you. So you had it as a kid. Now you got it at five, six, or seven years old. Now you're 47. Know that that spirit is good and strong and can take over and take over the ship at any given time. But of course, it's going to play with you because the spirit world, they like to move in patience. Just like any hunter, hunt down, they stalk the prey, they watch the prey, they see the every move, they know how you move, they know how you operate, they don't just go in for the kill, the devil don't go in for the kill, the devil sit back and let you think you got this thing together. But I'm just saying all of that to say this, saints, we are in a deficit, we are in a uh, we are in a spiritual warfare and it's not enough of us going around that's teaching and, and allowing and is gifted enough to allow, to have a resolution to the issue, to have a, 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 a solution to the issue. Demons need to be cast out. You have to be demon possessed. I mean, demon uh, deliver and, and deliver and set free of these things. And I'm telling you by and by, they are not a good thing. It's not a good thing to have them. It's not a good thing to be, to, to allow them to stay. You have to know that you have an issue. That's like an alcoholic. It's not good enough that you realize that I got an alcohol problem. But see, I have to come into the realization that I got an alcohol problem. Okay, alcohol wasn't my thing. Give me some, give me some weed. That was my thing. Marijuana. It wasn't, it wasn't enough that everybody knew I was a piehead. I had to come to the realization that I was a piehead. And not only that I was a piehead, because I knew that early on when I started at 11. I knew what I was. I knew what it was. I knew what I liked. I knew what it was. What I had to come to the knowledge of is that this was a problem in my life. It was a problem. See, it was a gateway drug for me. The weed wasn't a problem, let me tell it. But it got a, it became a problem when I started smoking woos. Now, when I started lacing it up, now I started seeing things shift and go into a negative direction. I couldn't see it with just the weed alone. I just thought it was a part of my personality. And it became a part of me because I started so early. That's how spirits get us. We start these things so early, they start growing up in us to where as though they become a part of us. And we should not, we can't differentiate our own personality from the demon personalities because remember they are personalities and they bring forth cravings, appetites, and personality traits, right? So I'm just here to let you guys know that in this season of family orientation, their job is to draw division. Their job is to draw habit. Their job is to keep um, fit friction and keep division because one can chase away a thousand, but two can put 10,000 a flight. So if a devil can separate, see, if he can break your kingdom down, if he break your family, your family orientation down, if he can break down your support system, if he can break down your support system and he can break down your family, he can break you down. See, if, see the devil do this. He bust up the crowd of the family. He'll bust things up and start plucking everybody off one by one because you weaken, you weaken numbers. We stronger in we stronger in numbers and numbers we have more power. This is why we are the body of Christ and for the strong to bury the infirmities of the weak. But if you don't know much, you can't do much. And if nobody never tell you about these things and you never hear about demonic possession and you never hear about these things, you just go on with the spirit of deception to believe that this is just who you are and this is just how you are. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Something took place somewhere in your life, in your childhood, in your past, in your growing up, in your youth that caused and opened doors. See, demons can't come in unless they are invited. Like you can't come to my house unless you're invited. You better not just pop up at my doorstep. Well, you know, me, I'm a little different. I'm in leadership. So if I get some, if I get a soul to step up on my doorstep, I'm not going to turn them away. And I'm not going to tell them a thing or two. I'm not going to give them, you know, I'm not going to be nasty. I'm going to do what I do. And that's serve what you need. What can I do? How can I help you? What we need to do. 
you're hungry, we need to pray, you need to go somewhere, what you need? So that's my position. But I'm just saying, if it wasn't my position, if I wasn't in leadership position, I just think it's rude to just pop up at somebody's door. I ain't gonna pop up at your door. You know what I'm saying? It, it, if I if I can't help it, because I, I must say, I do like surprising people. So I have popped up on folks' doorstep. Yeah, I have. I'm guilty of that. I've popped up at people's doorstep. But I'm just saying, on a regular basis, it's not something that you would just do. I just think it's rude. And it is rude. You know, you just don't just bust up at people's doorstep if you don't, if you can't help it. You know, but if it's something that you need to be done, then you got to do what you got to do. But I'm just saying all of that just to say that, um, you don't know about these things if you're not being taught about these things. And I'm finding that the, the, the body, the body of Christ is, um, I don't hear a lot of this. Everybody talking, you know, briefly and, 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 and um, candidly about demonic possession. But when you go, when I go to the church, when I go to the building, I see the need and I don't see the performances. I don't see the, 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 the folks being serviced. They're going into the church the same, they're going into the church one way and they're going out the same way. They're coming out the same way. Everybody want to be seen and heard and nobody want to service the souls of the people. So these people are just sick. You got souls running around here sick, demon possessed. Demon possessed and can't find a solution and going bonkers because they don't know what's wrong with them because nobody's teaching. Everybody want to hoop and holler. Don't nobody want to teach. Don't nobody want to teach. Nobody want to humble themselves before the most high God so that he can equip them with the gifts of casting these demons out. He said that the harbor, the labor is the, 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 the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He need, we need more laborers in a camp. We need more laborers in the body of Christ. DP folks need to be delivered. That's the problem, saints. So I want you to take some inventory in this season. Take some inventory in this season that we're in. Make a list. Find out some things about yourself. Find out, is this your personality or is this a demon possession personality? Is this a demonic personality that you've been, um, that you've been, um, that you've been carrying around all this time? Okay, and 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 let's get something done about it. It's time out, saints. It's time for us to get our souls right and bitterness and unforgiveness. We cannot get to heaven this way. You cannot. If you don't forgive your brothers, your sisters, your mama, your father, whomever of their trespasses, neither will your father in heaven forgive you of yours. Amen. So I just wanted to come on. Um, and, and like I say, and if you check a little closely to that spirit of bitterness, wherever, um, wherever the attitude of bitterness is found, one, one may expect to find the demons of bitterness, resentment, hatred, these are some of the groupings that hangs with that spirit. Unforgiveness. These are some of the spirits that hangs with bitterness. Unforgiveness, resentment, hatred. Um, in some instances, the chain, the, the spirit chain that goes includes a whole lot of others. Some people have all of the, the whole grouping. Some people just may have a few of the groupings out of the group. So just take some inventory. Know that I love you. And I just wanted to come on because the Lord had been just just tugging on my soul and tugging on my spirit in this time of family orientation. And that is the word, Brother Leroy. It is. And 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 we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful. And we have to, the word of God speaks about how his people perish from the lack of knowledge. And we are dying. We are dying and dying like dogs in the street, as some of us, uh, most of us, I should say, 99.99% of us are dying like dogs in the street because of our lack of knowledge, our lack of knowledge, not of anything else, but our lack of knowledge of this word. The word of God is the roadmap to heaven. It, we, it's a formula to this thing, saints. I'm telling you all, it's a formula. We can't get there any old kind of way. You're not living no hellish life. Let me just say this. You're not living no hellish life thinking that God is going to invite you into heaven. You ain't finna be the biggest dope dealer in the city and think you finna go to heaven when you die. You ain't repentant. You ain't did nothing. You just died. You got shot up in the bar. Come on, saints. Come on. We got to know better. Don't be, be not deceived. 
it can't be that we can't be this foolish to think grace and mercy ain't got nothing to do with it it's called disobedience rebelliousness and it carries a spirit of witchcraft i'm just saying i didn't write the bible i'm just an ambassador of it i'm just here to live it and, and let my light so shine before man that they will see my good works and glorify my father which is in heaven because it's about time that the real saints stand up it's not about talking about it it's about living this thing and being about it and i just want to see everybody get to heaven and I remember Bishop Bishop Adams was always tell me, prophetess, listen, you ain't go, you can't, you can't get everybody to heaven. And my little smart sassy self, I used to be like, well, Bishop, I can die trying. Well, Bishop, I'ma die trying. Listen, now I know what I know. I was a young, young ignorant somebody then, talking all crazy. Listen, I, 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 my desire is still that everybody be saved, and that was Jesus's desire. But the reality of it is, everybody is not gonna want it. Everybody is not going to fight for it. Everybody is not going to accept it. And I'm just saying, God is a gentleman. He will not work against your will. He will not work against our will. He's only going to work with our will. And our will is coming to the knowledge of the truth that Houston, I have a problem. I need some help. That's the only way he's going to move on our behalf is if we come to the, road, the, the crossroads that we are in trouble my lifestyle, the way I choose to live has gotten me nowhere. I need to try something else. I didn't try crack. I didn't try selling the streets. I didn't try selling, selling some thighs. I didn't try selling some leg. I didn't try, you know, I mean, you know, I didn't try. I didn't try it every other way. I'm trying to say this as nice as I possibly can. I didn't try it every other way. So let me now try Jesus. And I'm just saying, saints, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence we must get right church so we can get ready to go home jesus is about to crack the skies open he has the doors of heaven open and he is about ready to make his debut ready or not ready or not i'm going to heaven that's my story i'm sticking to it listen i love my chaps i love my grand chaps i love my my family but i tell you i ain't going to hell for nobody that that's just you heard that from me yep yep let, let me say that again i ain't going to hell for nobody the devil is a lie that's not my vision. I done lived in hell for a long time. I done lived on this earth and been through hell for a long time. I've been fighting to live and fighting to live since the moment of conception. Born with sickle cell anemia, diagnosed with cancer, cracked up, messed up, all in the streets, jacked up, down in the gutter. Listen, mm -mm. that's not the vision. To also die and then burn in hell for eternity, that's just not the vision. Uh -uh. It's, it's a better way. And I'll take, I'll take heaven for 200 Alex. That's what that's going to be about. So I'm just here to try to tell anybody and shine some light on some things because this is the season for family orientation and we must do better. We must do better. It's not about talking better. It ain't even about talk, you know, because faith without works is dead. You can talk all day long and you ain't living this thing. The Bible says to know the word is to live the word. To know it is to live it. The devil can quote scripture. He know the Bible. From Revelations, from Genesis to Revelations, the devil knows scripture. Word verbatim. He was quoting it to Jesus over in Matthew. Check your word. I'm just saying. The devil knows scripture. And for those that ain't so equipped in the Bible, the devil will beat the dog slop out of us with the word of God. He will take the Bible and beat us with it. So you got to know your word. Not just know it, but you got to be living your word. You have to build a rapport with the Lord. You have to build a relationship, solid relationship, same relationship, same time we put with these men. Yeah, same time you put with building that relationship with that woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the same kind of time, energy, and effort that we must put in with the Most High God. It's not going to happen no other way. Amen. So I said, I promised that I was not going to be before you long, but I just couldn't hold on to it no longer. I just needed to come and get that out, and I have to get myself. Whew, I had to say that because I need you guys to know that we have to be mindful. Listen, don't allow the spirit of bitterness to cause you to respond. Don't allow the spirit of bitterness to cause you to respond. Don't respond. Don't allow it to make you bitter. You have to forgive them for you. You have to forgive them for you. You have to forgive them for you. It's not for them. It's for you. I had to forgive my loved ones. I had to forgive my loved ones. Amen. I had to forgive my loved ones and you have to forgive them for you. Welcome, Prophet Jermaine. How, uh, Jeremiah, I'm sorry. Welcome, Prophet Jeremiah, sir. How are you? How are you? Come on in. 
Um, so I love you guys. And I just wanted to come on in and just say, be encouraged. Take some time to do some inventory and to check self. Um, and just see where you at, where you stand, where you are, where you are, where are your relationship, where is your relationship with the most high God? If you died the day of tomorrow, where would you go? Amen. Do you know that 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 you'll make it to heaven? Are you compromising? You got idols, you idol worshiping, you put up a Christmas tree, you're getting ready for Christmas. I'm just saying saints. I ain't gonna go in on y'all with that Christmas thing, not just yet, but it's coming. It's coming. I want y'all to read Jeremiah 10. Je read Jeremiah 10. It's a pagan holiday and it will send you to hell. Christmas is not Jesus' birthday. There is no known date. And he did it because of this reason right here. Everybody's celebrating idolatry. He told us not to do any of the practices that our forefathers did because the same God that spewed them out will also spew us out. So that lets me know that the forefathers before me that celebrated these pagan holidays ended up missing heaven. And that God warned me not to do it so that I don't miss heaven. Forget them kids. Y'all better stop lying to them kids and be honest with them kids because liars is also going to have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Be not a partaker of another man's sin. Christmas is idolatry. Christmas is idolatry. Christmas is idolatry. It is not of God. It is not of God. It is not of God. Saints of God have no business celebrating Christmas. And I got scripture. Amen. So know that I love you guys. This is Prophet Adams with your praise break and a word for the soul. Have a great rest of your night. Till next time. God bless and good night.